Welcome back. This module is about text representation. In this module, we'll talk about converting text into different formats that can be consumed by machine learning techniques. First, we'll look into the theoretical background and then we'll implement it through the code as well. So, machine learning techniques require highly structured data. A data that is being organized in the form of a table or a matrix that has got rows and columns. In, textual, in, in the case of textual data, the rows represent documents and the columns represent unique features. Each document is going to hold a value for these features. In case of supervised learning, the last column represents labels. Otherwise, in case of unsupervised learning, this may not be provided. So this structured data is being provided to the machine learning techniques as past cases and the model is being constructed. Once the model is ready, it can be used to predict the label for any unseen document. Our task at this stage is to convert the unstructured data into a format like this. This process is called vectorizing the data. So if you are given a data set like this, the target would be to convert this data set into this format where we have got documents from D1 to Dm and unique set of features from T1 to Tn. Unique set of features is also called vocabulary or dictionary. Once the processing is being performed, this document, this data set can be converted into a structure like this. this. This is the desired structure that we can provide to the machine learning technique. As you can see, we have got the rows as documents and the unique set of features as columns. Each document has got a certain value for each feature. In this case, the value represents the frequency of occurring of this feature in this document. This is one way of representing this data set in, into a structured format. There are other representations as well that we'll look into in a while. One of the important things to consider over here is that this representation is following a bag of words approach. A bag of words approach is the one in which the position related information is lost. For example, once we convert, we have converted this document into this format, there is no way we can reconstruct this document from this representation because we do not know where this was placed in the document. We know that it was present once, we know that there was an is, we know there is a but there is no information about the position. We on purpose lose the position related information because that is going to make the case a lot difficult. And we are going to have a lot many features and too few representation for these features. Because if you consider a longer sequence like this is a, there will be more sequences like this because is a document is another feature. And then we can have features of four and even five words of sequence. So. If we make such sequences and they are going to be more unique in the data set and we are going to have less representation of them. We compromise on the position related information to make this feature simple and have more representation, more frequency of these features in the documents. And we believe that for a huge set of documents, the model is still going to learn good enough. Some of the other representation schemes are if we consider a hypothetical data set that has got diet occurring in document one once, sports occurring 12 times, ground five times, and similarly we have frequency based representation of all these set of unique features in these four documents, which is all we have in the data set. This can also be represented in a binary representation like this where the words that have frequency one or more than one is being presented as one and all the other words or features that do not occur in documents represented with zero. This is the case where frequency related information may not be required. A particular case of this scenario would be searching for certain words in the title or abstract of a research paper. Now, if that word occurs, that would mean that the research paper is very much relevant. Irrespective of the nature, if that word occurs more than once, that would still be very relevant. So this is a case of where frequency related information is not important. Binary representation can be used. And with the help of binary representation, we can actually improve the efficiency, the processing efficiency of our system. Some other frequently used approaches are the log frequency, which dampens the higher values of frequency. So if you see uh, player, the, so if you see a uh, player is occurring nine times in document one and 20 times in document two, if we see over here, the difference between the two is being dampened. So as the value gets higher, it's increase gets dampens. And therefore, you, if you use the log frequency based representation, we are not differentiating between high value and very high value because if a document has certain words occurring a certain number of time and occurring a little more would still mean that the document belongs to that specific topic. A commonly used approach for text representation is TF-IDF. In TF-IDF, uh, the important thing is uh, the earlier techniques that we saw so far were using the term frequency. And it adds this inverse document frequency in which a document that is 
that is frequent across all documents gets a negative weight. So, so we are only interested in words that are frequent in certain documents but not all of the document because that would mean that these words are stop words. This is a very important approach to consider uh, and is being frequently used. Well, yes, there are stop word lists that can be used to eliminate the stop words at pre-processing but there are some corpus based stop words as well and this is very effective uh, to them. So next we will look into the, into the implementation of these techniques.